Hello everyone, this is Jaime Rivera with BakkenOut.com and well, just like we've begun CES 2012, telling you everything that we expected to happen in the event, let's go through the things that happened, the things that didn't, and what disappointed. Okay, so let's start with the biggest winners of CES 2012, and we think that the biggest win is AT&T. I mean, out of the blue, nobody was expecting AT&T to bring out so many devices, and we got six new Android smartphones, and we also got two new Windows phones, and all these devices are 4G LTE, so it's really great to see that AT&T brought us some really great budget devices, like, for example, the Pantech Element that probably may not be that big for you, but hey, it's a waterproof device, so if you're out there for a tablet for your kids or something, that's probably your best choice, and you can actually purchase it with other budget smartphones for a really good price. And we also got some really good high-end smartphones from Android, like for example the Sony Xperia I, and I was about to say Ericsson, but there you go. And well, we also got some really good Windows Phone 7.5 devices. The HTC Titan 2 brings that 4G LTE connectivity to the Titan design. It was a really good device. We brought the hands-ons of all these devices. And well, aside from that, we also have the Nokia Lumia 900, which we did expect to happen, but we were kind of thinking that 4G LTE wouldn't happen, and it did. So the Lumia 900 is also another hands-on that we showed you. So far, the device is really good. And while another big winner for CES 2012 is definitely Microsoft and their Nokia combination. I mean, speaking of Microsoft alone was the fact that they figured out how to get some really good 4G LTE connectivity on their new Windows phones. That was something we didn't think could happen. I mean, we heard that hardware, software-wise, the operating system was not really optimized for a 4G LTE, so we thought we'd have to wait until probably the Apollo release by the end of this year. Now, this was really surprising. We were hoping for it, but it was wishful thinking. We were, we we didn't think it would really happen. Now, we have the HTC Titan 2 and we also have the Nokia Lumia 900. Now, speaking of that Lumia 900, we were expecting the 800 to be released in the United States and hey, we got something better. The Lumia 900 is a really great device, really great Lumia 800 design, but actually bigger. Uh, we reviewed the 800 and it was a really good device, but obviously there are people out there that want the big screen. And I personally prefer Windows Phone 7 on a larger screen, so definitely the Lumia 900 is a compelling device for a lot of you. Now, speaking of winners, we also got Verizon that finally brought us their Motorola Droid 4. I mean, it was more like a soap opera, waiting for that device with so many leaks and no phone. But we finally got it. It's a really good Razer design that brings you a slide-out keyboard. If you're out there for a Razer, the Motorola Droid 4 is definitely your device if you want the keyboard. And also, we got the LG Spectrum, which brings that 720p display. Really good design, really good device. I really liked it personally. And, well, we also got that Samsung Galaxy Tab 7.7, and probably that was probably the biggest one. And for me it was because the reason why I don't like 7-inch tablets is because you also have to put up with the bulk of a 7-inch tablet because they have to fit the battery and just about everything there on a smaller sandwich like you see on, for example, the Kindle Fire or the BlackBerry Playbook. But somehow Samsung figured out a way to pull it off with this Galaxy Tab 7.7 .7 and it's not plasticky. It's really sturdy, a really good design. I wasn't really sure if it was metal or not. It looked metal, it felt metal, but you know, they do some really good things with plastic these days, so could be. But it was a really good design design so far was really sleek and the performance was great. So definitely if you're out there for 7-inch tablet, this most likely should be your next pick. I know it will be for a lot of us. Now, out of the blue, another one that we got out there that we weren't really expecting anything from was Sprint. We got their Samsung Galaxy Nexus brought for their 4G LTE network, and we also got the LG Viper. Now, well, you have two choices. You can either go for the higher-end Samsung Galaxy Nexus, though it's the same design and the same device that you already know that we reviewed, and we also have the LG Viper. If you're looking for a mid-tier device that'll bring you stock Android 2.3 on your 4G Sprint LTE network. Now, again, we weren't really expecting anything. It's good news that we got it, so let's hope they come out soon because nobody's providing dates. I kind of hate that. And well, Intel was also able to deliver. We were not really sure if they were able to pull some, something off with their Intel Atom chip for a smartphone, but we did get a device. Sadly, we didn't get an LG smartphone. We got a Lenovo device, which we showed you a hands-on. It looked really good, though. Well, we tried the prototype, and everything worked well with the prototype, but then when you got the Lenovo phone, it didn't really cut it there. So we are expecting them to polish their Android UI because the Lenovo UI is kind of weird. Not really sure when we're getting this device 
device on the United States. We're getting it in China somehow. I don't know if you're in China, so we're kind of waiting to see what happens because remember last year, we got that phone from LG and Intel that never got released. So sadly, it's kind of a hit or miss. Let's see if they really pull it off. Lenovo seems to be really sold on this. And well, let's hope they release it soon in the United States. So far, the specs and like you could see on their preview, I mean, the phone really performed well. The prototype, at least. Let's see what happens. And well, just like we started with the biggest winners, let's talk about the biggest losers. I mean, honestly, we were expecting more Android devices to be launched. 2011 CES was the event for all Android devices to be released, and sadly, we didn't get that same story in CES 2012. We were expecting a lot of ice cream sandwich out there, and well, we got a lot of gingerbread that will eventually be upgraded, but that was pretty much it. We didn't get more. And then we were also expecting more from, for example, T-Mobile, and we didn't get anything, at least nothing compelling. And then, well, that was pretty much it. That was CES 2012 in the mobile spectrum. Obviously, we do have CTIA and we do have MWC that will bring you more mobile devices. Let's hope that all OEMs and carriers polish Ice Cream Sandwich more, polish Windows Phone more to bring us more devices in the future because, well, CES was mostly a consumer electronics show for 3D TVs. That was pretty much the big news here. And last year was more Android. So, smart TVs were the thing this year. Let's see if we get some more smartphones and tablets in the next events. So this is Jaime Rivera signing off from CES 2012. We had a lot of fun. It was a lot of work, a lot of things to cover. We hope you enjoy the hands-on. So leave us the comment down below. What things did you like the most and what things did you not like the most? Thank you very much.